Hi everyone, I'm Robin Verzen. I'm a physician and I'm the founder and CEO of Parsley Health based in the US. I really am thrilled to have been invited to this conference and you guys have been talking about AI and machine learning and uh, how computers can see and so this talk is going to be quite a bit different. Uh, healthcare is in fact excessively human and so I personally be believe as a physician that we need to start with the human aspect and build our tech around that as opposed to the other way around. So a bit about Parsley Health, and then I'm going to skip ahead to my talk on UX, but in general, Parsley Health is groundbreaking care from doctors and health coaches who get your big picture. We're an alternative new medical service in the United States, $150 a month annual membership, where we provide top-notch medical care from doctors, behavioral support from coaches, nutrition and lifestyle advice, supplements, and advanced diagnostic testing, uh, and we feel we are the future of healthcare. So I write a lot about and talk a lot about UX and health because the user experience in healthcare today is pretty shitty. Uh, and I don't want to speak for Europe or Germany in particular because obviously, as I'm sure many of you know, US healthcare has its own special problems. Uh, but we have a service layer that is incredibly dated, uh, incredibly difficult to use. Uh, it looks bad, it smells bad, it's archaic, uh, and it's not designed around the human. And so Parsley Health is working really hard to change that. So our biggest problem in healthcare, I think, is that we're really good at generating medicine, but we are terrible at generating health. And so I hate to be like deliver the slide that bombards you with a million stats, but it's really important to see these. And I know that these are, again, US specific stats, but in every developed country in the world, this is where they are and this is where they're going. 67% are overweight or obese, over 50% are diabetic or pre-diabetic, stressed and depressed, 75 million prescriptions written for anti-anxiety medications like Ativan and Xanax per year and growing, 26% are in chronic pain, 90% are eating an ultra-refined diet, that's a diet that's highly processed and essentially made of three things, corn, wheat, um, and soy, it's the same things we feed animals and we subsidize in the US, uh, that's what most of our food supply is made of. Uh, and it, at 67% of 18 to 45 year olds, that's our younger working up and coming population, have at least one chronic condition, that's 2015 NIH data. And we know that 86% of our diseases are chronic and lifestyle driven or lifestyle modifiable. And yet we're fulfilling 4 billion prescriptions every year in the United States. And so I think the obvious thing to ask is like, we have no shortage of drugs, like no shortage. Most people are on at least chronic, one chronic drug or will be. Elderly people are on multiple. And yet we're not getting healthier, we're getting sicker. And so I think we need to look at that. So why do we have so much medicine and so little health? Well, I believe, and we believe at Parsley, and many people believe, that the basic reason is that healthcare is not designed for you. It's designed for insurance companies and provider systems. It's designed for everyone but you. And so a couple takeaways for how, why, examples of why that is. The average doctor's visit in the US is 15 minutes. People spend 15 minutes a year with their primary care doctor. That's not enough time to know anything about you, let alone resolve the chronic lifestyle-driven diseases that you're encountering or that you're living with. Um, our record system um, at home known as EMRs, electronic medical records, um, are actually insurance billing systems. Their primary function is to bill insurance claims, um, and then they've had a lot of other functionality tacked onto them to allow for patient care, but they were never designed for patient care because their primary function is, is billing and, and bringing in money. Um, our providers, myself included, I went to Columbia University's medical school, one of the top medical schools in the United States. Uh, we spend over 500 hours studying pharmacology about drugs, and we spend less than four learning about nutrition. On surveys, uh, the vast majority of doctors don't feel that they have anything to say about nutrition uh, to their patients and don't feel confident prescribing it. And then there's no financial transparency. So we have a weirdly wonky system in the US where um, knee surgery in Florida could be seven times what the same surgery is in Alabama, and nobody knows what anything costs. And as a result, prescription drug prices and for asthma, for instance, have gone up 169% in a couple of years. Uh, and nobody can really get a handle of that because there's no pricing transparency. Meanwhile, uh, Amazon knows a lot more about you than your doctor. Um, and I'll let you read the quote from, quote from the New York Times, but essentially, 
every single major retailer, the US Postal Service, every single consumer facing company in the United States and everywhere today, this is what this conference is about, how we can make any industry smarter. All of these industries have used data science and predictive analytics to make them better, to improve services, really except for healthcare. Healthcare is not caught up, and it's, we had our most important consumer-facing service, and yet we don't have, uh, literally don't have smart medicine. So my goal, and our goal at Parsley Health, is to reimagine healthcare as a user-driven experience. And I give this talk a lot to healthcare providers and people in the healthcare industry. So forgive uh, you know, hearing maybe some things that you already, as designers and technologists and entrepreneurs, already think about a lot. Um, but I hope that you take away from this presentation how much these, this amazing level of technology and design that you're all bringing to your work here needs to apply to our most fundamental service, which is health. Um, so my hypothesis is that we need a new DNA for healthcare, for how we deliver actual services, and this is really bare bones. I believe we need to go to direct to consumer, which is quite controversial. I believe that we need to establish design-based values, and I believe we need to enable data-driven decisions. So we'll do a case study. Uh, so one of my patients a couple years ago, I still see patients about one day a week um, in my work at, at Parsley Health um, as one of their physicians. Um, it was this 37-year-old woman, um, very thin, very fit looking, ran triathlons, um, but she had severe asthma to the point that uh, she was on six chronic medications. She had been to every specialist. None of the drugs were working. She was still landing in the hospital at least once a year with an asthma exacerbation. Uh, she was on $800 worth of medications per month. Um, and she also, because she was training, she, had, she actually had prediabetes because of the way that she was eating, which no one would have thought to look at or caught because she's relatively young and she's not overweight, so why would she have a blood sugar problem? Through her work with us at Parsley Health, we identified that she had food sensitivities. Uh, we got to know her, asked her what she was eating, identified when her asthma symptoms had started. She had had mild asthma as a child, but never anything so severe. Identified the fact that a major stressor in her life had triggered her asthma symptoms and the severity. Um, really got to know her as a person. We analyzed thousands of data points about her life story, because at Parsley, we believe that your timeline starts before you're born. When, when using your genetics data and your family history, whether or not you were born C-section, which actually makes you more likely to have asthma or autoimmune conditions, as well as obesity and blood sugar problems down the road, uh, the medications that she'd had as, um, as a child, the fact that she'd had a lot of digestive problems as a child and was probably had a dairy intolerance but kept eating it anyway, and through getting to know her, as well as doing in-depth analysis of her microbiome, looking at 100 times the number of biomarkers that a regular doctor would, we identified that she was just allergic to gluten, which is a protein in wheat, um, and dairy. Uh, she stopped eating these foods. We helped shift her microbiome balance, corrected a problem called intestinal permeability, which is quite common today. Uh, and Beyond that, also helped her change her diet and the way that she was training so that we reversed her hemoglobin A1C, uh, the marker of being pre-diabetic. And so now, she says to us that we've changed her life and saved her life. She's on zero medications. Literally, we peeled them back slowly over time. You can't just stop somebody's six chronic drugs, like, overnight. But because we have a relationship with her, knew her, and worked with her for multiple years and multiple months over time, we were able to peel all those drugs back safely. Now she's had, in two years, no drugs, no hospitalizations, and no cost to her chronic illness. So Parsley Health, this is a little bit about our model, and this is how we work, and it's, again, germane to how I think we need to transform uh, healthcare services in a user-driven way. So first of all, if the consumer is paying something for their health care, it really changes the way that they think about their health care. Health care isn't just this thing that maybe the government or like comes out of your paycheck and you don't really know how it's paid for and you have no transparency for what you're getting and you have no buy-in. There is no buy-in for health services. People use them when it, things have gotten really bad and it's too late. That's how people use health today. Um, and we believe that your doctor should know you. Our average visit in the US for a doctor's visit is 15 minutes, ours is 50 minutes. Our first visit with Par Parsley Health is 75 minutes. It's five times what the average person spends with their doctor annually. Um, we offer behavioral health coaching because we know that a doctor can give you a plan, but if you don't go home and actually do it, it's pretty worthless from an outcomes perspective and from your perspective. 
Um, we prescribe nutrition and lifestyle. We prescribe meditation over medication. Um, we've actually lowered, I'll get to that in a second, but lowered prescription drugs by 60%. Um, we have a partnership with Headspace, which is an app, and we get to see that our uh, members are using thousands of um, sessions of meditation every single month um, because they get free access to this app through us. Uh, we do advanced testing, toxins, hormones, microbiome, genomics, because we're interested in what's going on, on the surface. What what is dysfunctional? What is driving the underlying process of disease rather than waiting until you're sick? And unlike any medical practice I know of, um, other than large hospital systems, we have data scientists and engineers on staff who are constantly analyzing what we're doing, our health outcomes, how we're interacting with our members, and how we can make our services better. We're only able to do this because the consumer is actually paying directly for this part of their care. If we were beholden to the payer system, we would have to have 15-minute visits, 40 a day, burning and churning them through, handing them a prescription, and sending them out the door. When I worked at Mount Sinai Hospital as a resident, I would hand people uh, stacks of, of, they would print out the prescriptions in pages, and there would be four prescriptions per page, and I would frantically sign them on. I'd be sometimes signing up to five pages of prescriptions and handing them to a patient, um, and that was basically the amount of our care, you know, 20 prescriptions at a time. I thought it was horrible, so I left. The next thing we have to do is bring design values to healthcare, and we need them to define care. We need to listen to our customer. The average patient in the American healthcare system isn't listened to. We need to create uh, a constant feedback loop, and we do that really well with our patients through things like NPS cards, interviewing, membership advisors, things that you can't do in the conventional healthcare system. We know that brand matters. You can follow Parsley Health on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Uh, we have an incredible um, blog. Our newsletter won a Webby Award. We're actually talking to our community beyond just talking to our patients, and we know that we're an educator. We know that relationships trump rules. Uh, medicine is very rule-bound, and as a result, it's really easy to sacrifice relationships, but we know that you can buy a lifetime and build a lifetime um, of value and, and, and loyalty with your patient um, if you are able to bend things to meet their needs as opposed to being extremely rigid. And then we're proactive instead of reactive. We take a seek and solve mentality, whereas healthcare tends to wait until something bad happens and then reacts. And then finally, um, our proprietary data architecture, which we've built, links three areas of data that no one else has in the same place in healthcare. That's marketing data, financial data, and out health outcomes data, including biomarkers, biometrics, utilization, and so forth. And we use all of that to create a synopsis of the individual. And these are some really basic examples I've provided, provided just to help you understand the kinds of things we look at, but it's much more than this, uh, including messaging utilization. We have a real-time messaging platform where our patients can message directly with their doctor. They don't have to call and wait. Um, we look at utilization rates, and we try to maximize things like hours availability um, and how we deliver care based on the data that we're getting. And then what's really cool is we not only are building a better healthcare service product, but we have amazing health outcomes. So we have 72 times the user engagement versus a regular primary care doctor. We have 60% fewer prescription drugs. The average primary care doctor visit in the US results in a prescription 70 to 80% of the time. We're 10% because we actually know our members and our patients. We don't need to just hand them a prescription. We can help them figure out that they're allergic to a food and to stop eating it so that their asthma can go away. Back to my patient. Um, our predictive algorithms have helped us re-engineer our services, increase retention of our membership, and provide a better overall user experience for our patients. Uh, and then we're actually seeing chronic conditions that are high-cost chronic conditions resolve 80 to 90% of the time in as little as six months. So we're looking at things like premenstrual sy syndrome, eczema, which is a... Um, autoimmune condition, irritable bowel syndrome, which 40 million Americans have, um, and insomnia, which is a major cost and productivity driver for companies. Uh, and we have incredible results to show for it. So that's a bit about me and Parsley Health and how we're rethinking healthcare. Thank you guys so much, and I'm happy to take questions. <laughs> I have like 10 seconds to go. <laughs> All right, I'm going to get closer to you, see if I can get good at this. Oh. Uh, firstly, how, do, how are insurance companies responding to your service? 
Well, it's interesting. We've really de deliberately avoided um, insurance to date because my view is if you're not actually a user-driven service and they're a consumer-driven service, as soon as the insurance company becomes your payer, you have to completely redo everything you're doing for their purposes. That said, there's a lot of insurance companies who are looking at more innovative models. They're looking at, this is a direct primary care model, which means that you pay an annual capitated fee um, per person for sort of all-inclusive care. There's various types of that. It's actually one of the fastest growing industries in the United States healthcare. It's popping up all over the place in different ways. We're really unique in the way that we think about experience and also bringing in nutrition, lifestyle, meditation, supplements. Direct primary care isn't, in general, isn't always doing that. They're just offering basic primary care on that pricing model. Um, but insurance companies are in reaching out to us and reaching out to more and more in the direct primary care space because the way that they're paying for care isn't working. I still think it's going to be slow going, though. Okay. I have uh, one more question. Yeah. Um, given that, like, how do you scale your business given that um, it seems like you would rely a lot on the network of professionals in order to ensure a quality of service? Uh, well, we scale certainly through our doctor and health coach driven services. That said, um, we're increasingly building out a platform that allows people to interact with it, enter their data, get advice on their data, and will be a little bit more automated. Um, so there's going to be other layers of our product built out of this type of medical care. That said, I hope that we have a lot of copycats. Um, we're not going to be able to serve all 200, 300 million Americans who need us, um, but we'll be one large player along with others who are doing similar things. Who wants the box next? Up here at the front. <laughs> um, how many members do you have right now, and where is sort of your cap and capacity? Well, the cap on capacity is ultimately limited, although unlimited, although we have a much uh, smaller number of members per doctor that we ultimately want to see um, versus a regular primary care panel. Um, currently, we have 1,500 members across our three cities in New York, Los Angeles, and San Francisco. And we launched last year. Yep. Cool. Anybody else? Cool. Okay. Yeah? Thank you so much, Thanks. Robin.